Yeah. Uh, the talks around negotiations for Nigeria's new national uh, minimum wage has come to an end, and that's uh, between labor, and when I say organized labor, I'm talking about the Nigeria Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress, the federal government, in a tripartite committee, they've been talking um, all week long, I'm talking about last week, trying to arrive at um, an agreement well, as it is, the federal government uh, proposed 62,000 naira as the new minimum wage. Let's not forget quickly that Labour earlier rejected the 60,000 naira that was previously proposed by the federal government. Now the federal government has proposed 62,000 naira going up by 2,000. And Labour are putting their foot down and uh, standing at 250 thousand naira. Also, uh, the finance minister last week was given um, a 48-hour uh, ultimatum by the president to come up with a template for the new national minimum wage, which he did uh, within those hours and has presented to the president as well. So right now, uh, everyone is waiting for President Bola Ahmed Tinubu uh, to either give a nod or just set everybody on a new path as it is. Meanwhile, apart from the federal government um, not going too far from 60,000 Naira, state governors are also saying that 60,000 Naira as Nigeria's new minimum wage is actually not sustainable because they cannot afford to pay. Last week, a video started trending showing the secretary to uh, the government of the Federation, Akume. In that video, he was talking about him not being able to afford to pay his four drivers 100,000 naira each as their monthly salary. Let SGF himself say he himself cannot afford to pay 100,000 naira a salary to his drivers. All right, Mr. Zukama. Let's talk about this minimum wage issue again. At this point, the governors are backing up the federal government, and according to them, labor, uh, even, even though labor is even um, rejecting 60,000 naira, they say 60,000 naira for them as governors, you know, is unsustainable. Yeah, because they cannot pay. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, first of all, the question I keep asking is why must there be a universal minimum wage across across Nigeria. board because mm. during the colonial era the colonial era had the, the colonial government had a minimum wage for northern one for northern nigeria one for southern nigeria and one for uh the colony of Lagos. or oh, this the was it city whatever it was called it mm. was administered separately from mm. western nigeria so three different minimum wages because it's obvious that the cost of living across Nigeria is not the same, cannot mm. be the same. So why this centralization of the negotiation? Whereas to the man in Jigawa, 60,000 might be a lot of money. Mm. To the man in Port Harcourt or Lagos State, 60,000 Naira is chicken change. So first of all, this needs to be decentralized a minimum wage made relevant to the individual state or individual uh, uh, regions. Uh, that's my first take on that. 60,000, uh, obviously, level is being unreasonable. You cannot increase the minimum wage from 30,000. Level wants 250,000. Now, which, 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 mm. which is most unreasonable. That's uh, a little less than 100% a little less than 1,000 percent increase. That, that's, that's just too unrealistic. And when we talk about minimum wage, it's supposed to also apply to the private sector. Mm. And so you employ a sales girl that will want you to pay her 250,000 naira every month. Mm. And what do you, how much do you make from your business selling clothes in a boutique? I think 60,000 is reasonable uh, in many, many states of Nigeria, not in all the states. Mm -hmm. um, but already many of the states cannot pay 30,000 naira, which is the present minimum wage. Many of the states are yet to start paying 30,000 naira. How do you expect them to pay 60,000 naira? Uh, 
so the state governments are naturally saying we cannot afford this payment. If we do, it will make it impossible to live or to, uh, to, to do other things, or to deal with other aspects of governance. Mm. It will be pay salary and we get broke, we can't build roads anymore, we, can't, we just cannot function, just pay salaries. And I think that is, uh, is 62,000 is reasonable. The thing is that the economy is in a hell of a mess. If I am to put Ronald Reagan, a one-time U.S. president, mm. the Nigerian economy is teetering at the brinks of a collapse. And that's what should be dealt with, because if the present trend, the economic trend continues, whether you pay people at a, very soon, whether you pay people 500, 1 million a month, it will not be, it won't worth anything. Mm. Nigeria will be like uh, Zimbabwe, where they started counting their money in billions. Maybe you need 1 billion naira to buy, to buy bread. water or a loaf of bread. bread. Yeah, so, <coughs> so the economy, something needs to be done to revamp mm. the economy, to get things, the economy functioning, and to reduce the rate of inflation. Mm. That's where the cocoa is, not just increasing uh, uh, minimum wage, which many states cannot afford. Okay, but let me to, was, okay, go, go ahead. ahead. No, let me put in at uh, this point, uh, Mr. Zukama. Now, Labour is, uh, has responded to the governors and uh, says uh, they can actually pay, that states can actually pay higher even than 60,000 naira. All they need to do is cut down on their frivolities. Uh, and also, um, the point that Edo State Governor, you know, stands out as an example, uh, even before all these negotiations on what the new wage would be, uh, the governor went on to increase the wage for that state to 70,000 naira, which they have started paying already as at last month. Okay, so um, looking at that, it looks like there are states that can actually you know, pay even beyond 60,000 naira. But Labour is saying the governors have to cut down on their frivolities, cut down on corruption and cost of governance and all of that for them to be able to, uh, to pay the new wage. Also, they also cited the point that the federal allocation, you know, they get from, you know, Abuja, every month has also been increased. Mm -hmm. So what really is their excuse, you know, for, for not being able to pay the minimum wage? Well, it goes to reinforce my area, uh, 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 statement that it, will, it should vary from state to state. Some states can afford it. Some states can even pay more. They, they, they undoubtedly have extravagance. You have a, a, a misappropriation of funds. You have political uh, patronage draining the, the resources of, mm. or the coffers of the state. We know that, and that is not changing tomorrow because of our mindset. People get into power hoping to enjoy the pomp and pageantry of power. Mm. People get into power hoping to enrich themselves, enrich family, and reinforce uh, 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 the privileges and prerogatives of the ruling class uh, mm. uh, uh, or, the, or the status quo. That you cannot change tomorrow. So in that respect, we can keep talking about if, 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 but the if will never be actualized. So let's deal with our reality, okay? Uh, our reality is that some state government, state governors are not saying we cannot pay it. They are saying if we do, it will make it impossible for us to continue to function. Uh, 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 it can be paid, but it's, it can't be sustained. It, it well, cannot it, it be sustained. Can, it can even keep sustaining it, but it will be at the expense of, of, government. of other the, things. The, of other things. The mm. whole system will just not function. The whole system will just degenerate into uh, uh, what, what's govern govern nonsensiveness because there's nothing else you can do. You need money for health, money for education, money for infrastructural development and so on and so forth. But if you pay this much money, that's what some governors are paying, mm. we can't be able to do the rest. We can't be able to uphold the rest of our responsibilities. Mm. And um, the man we saw on TV talking about these four drivers, I found that comical. Nigerian politicians, our leaders are something else. Hey, but like I've said time and time again that we have the, 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 the worst Nigerians 
the, the most comical Nigerians in the churches and in politics. A man is talking about paying his four drivers. It's living large, it's, it's flamboyance, it's triumphalism on a scale that boggles the mind for a man to have four drivers. So people are talking about 60,000 to survive, 100,000 to survive. You're talking about your inability to pay 100,000 each to your four drivers. So our power elites live in their own world. They are so removed from our reality that they don't even understand what we are saying. And not surprisingly, things are the way uh, they are. But that man shouldn't have made such a statement um, publicly because it goes to show the insensitivity of the uh, power elite to the increasing economic miseries of the Nigerian masses. Thank you, Mr. Izukam. Uh, okay, so uh, as it stands, the 36 uh, uh, state governors are saying 60,000 naira for them is not sustainable, so they've rejected it, even though the federal government has proposed 62,000 naira as a new minimum wage, which labor has also rejected. All right, so everything has been done, the negotiations has been concluded, Sada kind of okay because well, I don't you know. Ended you just tell me. Yeah, that's why. That's you why I said Sada because it's not. You said it ended. But yes, because they were supposed to have me. meetings the entire week. So I'm saying the sit down, the negotiations has ended. All right. So everything is now on the table of the president. Okay. So uh, whatever the president uh, now says, all right, will determine what comes next. But let me say, Kama, even as much as. Um, the 60,000, 62 as proposed by the FG is not uh, sustainable. Mm -hmm. It's also quite clear as well that we can continue with the old weight mm -hmm. because of a lot of factors, the food inflation, uh, the inflation itself and every other thing, the purchasing power of the majority of Nigerians also has been, you know, tampered with and all of that. So we can't stay on the old Wage, even in the face of the current economic crunch, you know, and all that. So, um, if you were labor, what would you propose at this point? Okay, the, the, the problem runs deeper than what level is proposing or what level is accepting. It was the former U.S. Uh, Secretary of State, Mrs. Clinton. Mm -hmm that say that the problem of the Nigerian political class is their refusal to make hard choices. They allowed the uh, corruption to fester and thus they frittered away their oil wealth. Now they are allowing bandits and terrorists to take over their country. They say need to make a hard choice. And we've not been able to make this hard choice. The hard choice will require sacrifice lots and lot of sacrifice on the part of the power elite mm. and the power elite is not ready to make the sacrifice they teach us how to make sacrifice the masses even some church pastors leaders help them in teaching us how to be calm how not to be protest how not to protest how to be patient how to make sacrifice and hope for a better future but the power elite cannot make the hard choices so it goes back to years of corruption, years of irresponsible economic policies, years of anti-people policies, years of lawlessness, years of you chop, I chop, years of wasteful political patronage. So it has brought us at this point where fellas say everything scatter, scatter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always want to feel that my friend. Mm -hmm. Scatter, scatter. Say everything, don't scatter, scatter. So this patching of this, patching of that will not take us too far. Mm. It requires going back to the drawing board and saying what went wrong. So whether Labour accepts 62,000, what was your question? 62. Labour will accept. What should Labour do now? Mm -hmm. um, because the old wage is no long, longer. No, 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 it's not no. viable. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do you any mm -hmm. good. I went to buy yarn <coughs> once a few days ago. <laughs> 
And they told me that the yam I wanted was 6,000 something, some said 8,000. I was screaming. For a tuba. And yeah. So finally, I bought one small one to manage for 4,000. But even that 4,000 paid me to remove 4,000. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it didn't feel good to me at all. I know how you feel, Mr. Zukadma. <laughs> Do you know there are some, in some places now, they don't even sell yams in tubers mm -hmm. anymore. All right, because people can't afford to buy a whole tuba yeah. of yam by themselves, so they are cutting them up Sass. in pieces. All right, so that at least people can buy, um, you know, like chunks of yam uh, for those who must eat yam. Okay, so but you know, people are just looking for ways to substitute and do. Uh, for a lot of people, sweet potato, uh, which is not also very cheap anymore. All right, might just uh, be a substitute, but then if it's not yam, it's not yam, you know what I mean. Yes. So, when you start, when that craving comes, mm -hmm. you just want, but it's so sad, yes. you know, that now people cannot buy a tuba of yam. So, yeah. I understand how you feel. We, we are do. suffering, subsisting as though Nigeria is in a war situation, cutting corners, managing. Uh, it takes me back, it, it, mm -hmm. uh, it sends me down memory lane, it makes me remember Biafra. I was a kid in Biafra, but I know how much people suffer. How mm. people, uh, uh, in Biafra we called Pam Canel, Biafran biscuit. Mm. There was no biscuit, no beer, no soft drink, no bread. So people were just eating pan canel, and they'll tell you, oh, it has protein, it has iron, it mm. has this. This is the government or their propagandism were encouraging, they were encouraging us to be eating those things. So that's what we are getting back to, which, which is extremely uh, sad. So 30,000 won't do anything for anybody. But then, if you say 100,000 and the state governments cannot afford them, many employers cannot afford them, hmm. what difference does it make? They will only pay what they can afford, be it 50, be it 60, be it 70. So we can come on, uh, 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 on paper and have this flowery, this impressive minimum wage. Mm. But in practice, people can afford it. Exactly. So where do you strike the balance between what is decent and what people can afford? Mm. That's what the two groups need to work out. Uh, I was impressed that um, Labour went on strike for once <laughs> because we got tired of Labour. We lost our respect for Labour. With the yo yo, uh, our strike today, uh, we are calling it off the last minute, we we'll strike, they call off. But for once, they went on strike. And I was, it was very impressive that muzzle flex and telling the government, this is what we can do if you do not take your time with us. But then it cannot continue. Hmm. You have to be reasonable about it. You do not, crumb, you, you, you did not crumble the economy. Uh, 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 what happens to the, the, the people you're trying to protect, mm. the, the, the workers, mm. then if there's no economy is not functional, there will be no jobs, so they'll be losing out. So you have to be reasonable about it mm -hmm. and strike, strike a, a balance. balance. That yes. is very delicate balance mm -hmm. in that. Thank you, Mr. Izikama. Well, this uh, minimum wage controversy is still on.